Welcome, welcome back to the NPL Victoria show with George Katsanis and Chris Gleeson. Chris, good to see you again. Good to see you after an excellent weekend of NPL football. We couldn't have asked for a better round of football. Goals in the bags, what, 33 goals or 32 goals in seven matches. Uh, drama, um, late, late drama on a lot of, a lot of, the, a lot of the grounds. Um, intriguing results. Heidelberg jumping into second place. Closing the gap with Avondale. Some of our tips were just absolutely ridiculous as we look back at them, and we'll, we'll have a look oh, at I'm, that. I'm pretty happy, Cotsy. I'm you, pretty you, happy with my week. You did a lot better than <laughs> I did. You smashed me in the tips. So. Yeah, that uh, Bentley comeback, I mean, the Kingston comeback against Bentley sort of stuffed one of my tips up at the last minute, but um, no, we're not going to go, in, gonna go into every single one of those. <laughs> but it was an exciting round, and there was a lot of good football. Now we're back again. Obviously enough interest for us to come back, so we're going to have another crack. Um, hopefully we'll uh, improve on last week, I'm sure we will, um, continue to showcase more or less uh, the players and the coaches and, as we said, the clubs um, and all the work that goes on that is making such an exciting season. Uh, round 23 was sensational. Um, you also got to Pasco Vale this week um, and did a little bit of... Uh, Scouting around, what did you get there? Yeah, just a, a bit of a feature interview with technical director Dean Hennessy and Pascoval, after a few senior players have left the club, uh, especially outside the transfer window, they've had to rely on their under 18s and 20s to make their mark for them to retain their position in the NPL, trying to get to that promotion relegation spot and that fight with Kingston and Dandenong Thunder. So I was able to go speak to a few of the young stars that are coming through at Pasco Vale. So that is the feature interview a bit later. We look forward to that. But firstly, before we look forward, let's look back at all the goals from round 23. But the ball is stolen away from him by Lombardo. But uh, Ellis! Ellis! Good God! Ellis with an absolute thunderbolt! Right back in, chested down by Derek. Riverway goes down, but Derek picks up the ball back up. And then he's gone down inside the area, and he's won a penalty for his side. Lucas Derek did not give up on the play. King versus Zara. And Zara wins the battle. Easy as you like. The little, oh, look at that. Very fancy there from Adrian Zara. Don't hurt yourself, mate. It's very wet. Football. Just Noon gets a chance to play it in behind the defense for Derek to run onto. Alinishaz brought him down. Oh, he got the ball there, Joey. Oh. He got the ball there, Joey. That, I don't think that should have been a penalty. It is a contentious one. Well, under controversial circumstances, Zara has a chance to make it 3 0. And he does so. He pretty much goes to the exact same space that he did the first time. Maybe a little higher. So, as that's well done from Pilkington. Dancing over the sliding challenge from Wilkins. Rides the challenge from Dib and eventually gets the ball in. It's spilled back out and it's in the back of the net for Dandenong City. It's the substitute, Sean Filipovic. Ball comes into the middle of the area. Pilkington rise. Ball is played back in and it's put in the back of the net. Dandenong City have their second. Book Delic, first ball across, and a great shot by Matthew Lazzarini's. City defense. Rahimi, he fires a shot. Blocked by Tennant. George Opos was onside. He was onside, and he scores. And it's 1 1. That's Acostas gives up possession here. That's a very nice ball through as well. Hume City get the lead back. A brilliant finish. By James Brown is inside the penalty box. Here we go. Daniel Leck. Can they get the equaliser? The header! They can! In goalkeeping terms and also with the football at his feet and in his hands as well. Now that could be a moment. It is. It's a penalty. Big chance for the Bentley Greens. Matt Thurtell. Steps up and puts it away into the bottom corner. A really good penalty there from Matt Thurtell. Goes himself to Nakamura and just couldn't quite find the final pass. Good defending there from Suleimani, but giving away poorly. This is a big chance here for Zidias, and he's made it too. Surging forward here, late. Delivers into the box. Inestranza gets it down. Striking into the top corner. 
to flex down, Forster for Hadashic. And again, falls for Hadashic. It's in! Kicks to the equalise in the final kick of the game. And Aiden Hef for Hadashic is the man who scores. Whips it in. Goes to the back post. It's Giselle. And Anthony Giselle puts the ball into the back of the net. Kamara gets past his man. Keeps his footing. Kamara looking up. Looking for Salmon. Alex Salmon. Alex Salmon. Alex Salmon. And now it's Ford, ball goes through, flag stays down, and it's Daniel Clark who opens the scoring for Port Melbourne. A dagger through the heart of the Altona magic defence of Altona. As Beekhurst drives it forward, Konogoya gets to turn on the left and score the second goal for the Port Melbourne Sharks, Yuta Konogoya. And Clark will get the chance to cross again. Vitakangas comes out, dropped it, and it's Maker Maker to make it three. Outstanding from Port Melbourne Sharks. And trying to cross it in. It finds its way. Sam Ford, can he make it four? He can. Sam Ford gets the fourth goal for the Sharks. And what a first half route this has turned out to be. Everyone back for the Sharks trying to defend. Milovanovic heads it towards goal. It's going to be scrapped around, and Milovanovic scores. So Altona get one back. After it, he'll get there first. Cross comes in, back post. McShane chests it to Nord. It's deflected. Kuczynski on the turn. It's off the post, and it's in. Two goals within a minute. McShane trying to keep it back alive. Kearney, penalties given. It's Troy Reuven for Altona, and he beats the goalkeeper. Altona get the third, second half goal, and they are right back in this game. Now James McGarry over the top. Kuczynski hits him in the back, but he'll get there. Gets back under the left foot, crosses back post McShane across the goal, and it's in. They get the goal, Hassan Jalal, 4-0 down, and they equalise at 4-4. What a game this is. Back to the Oakley playmaker, Guess trying to play a diagonal ball in behind the defence. Here's Harry White, early opportunity, comes back off the goalkeeper, and Harry White finishes at the second time of asking. What is... What they got in the middle, it's Boland, lays off, shot in, and equalises. Does Stefan Zinni. Kaczkowski. Into the front post. Guest on the strike, it's deflected, it's in. Feeding away Decker, Decker into the area, cross goal. Simple as you like, Harry White the scorer. Boland plays in Ahmed. Ahmed, oh what a goal. Yusuf Ahmed hands Avondale a lifeline. Gamano, flag stays down, Liam Boland cuts back onto his left. Liam Boland deflected, it's in, it's in. Avondale have come back from the net. Genie with the strike on goal, it's blocked. Zoric. Matthews with the cross in. Oakley have surely won it in the net. It's a header and it's Joe Guest. In the dangerous position here, holding off a defender. He dribbles, cuts across and it's a goal. It's a goal. Beautiful ball in. Statimitos, clear it, and it's a goal for South Melbourne. Train here. Very well played, has left open space for Marifiotti here. Dangerous time, Salinas, and it's a goal! It's home! Well, Kotsi, what incredible games we've seen this weekend, and plenty of goals, plenty of late drama, plenty of comebacks. What a, what a weekend of football. It was just a sensational uh, weekend of football. Very exciting. Every time I checked the result and then went back and checked the result, it had f flipped and flopped, and uh, clearly uh, the game that you were uh, commenting at went from a 4 nil to a 4 all. Um, so, look, the late drama as well, late goals, teenagers scoring goals, it, it was just full-on action so we'll just go back and review quickly those games friday night um pasco vale and hume city um again here's one with late drama yeah a couple of teenagers getting on the score sheets uh for pasco vale 
Well, it was Matthew Lazaridis who scored an excellent goal for Hume City against his former club. Um, Beautiful left foot finish. That it one. was a great, great finish. And then you see the the, the youngsters sort of come into it. A deflected effort fell into the path of Nick Georgiopoulos, who got his third goal for the season. And then Hume City with a great pass from Stephen Hewitt put through James Brown, and then the late drama Jesse Barber. Well, I know Hume aren't happy because it was only supposed to be three minutes of stoppage time and it ended up being, the, I think, the 95th or 96th minute that Jesse Barber scored from the header. But it was a great finish from the youngster and um, Pascal get a share of the points. Yeah, no, look, and uh, it was good just to see um, some fresh young talent and obviously Pascal through necessity, are using the young boys, but it's always um, refreshing to see young guys playing well, scoring, having an impact. So well done to Paco and... Stealing that point right at the end, unfortunately, at Hume, uh, they'll look back and it was an opportunity to go clear fourth uh, with Gully drawing as well. So uh, I will be disappointed, but they've got a big game coming up this week. So we'll look forward to that. Bentley and Kingston City, another one. Well, we thought that Bentley, uh, they get that first half penalty. We, you thought Bentley would win. I thought Bentley would win 3 0. You (laughs) thought that Kingston would get the points. So I guess being a draw, you're probably a little bit closer than me, but um, not enough to get you that little tick on the on the tipping cotsy. But no. But uh, Bentley, 2 0 lead, and then the late drama. You can never rule out a Nick Tolios side. He's got his side playing with such spirit. They never give up, and we saw that on Friday night. Yeah, they certainly have been brave of late, and um, having watched them play the week before, um, I'm confident that they'll throw caution to the wind and they really have nothing but to do that um, they really got to take some chances um, from where they are on the ladder but um, again that late drama and and just adding to the excitement of the uh, Friday night which was a huge night um, speaking of which and more drama Heidelberg who you tipped to win and I didn't uh, ran uh, or raced into a, a 3-0 lead but again Dandenong City uh, weren't prepared to lie down so yeah, well, it was Sean Ellis opened the scoring with a long range strike. What a, what a finish that was! From Surprisingly, him. cutting in from the right and hitting with his left. Yes, the yeah. uh, the the Robin of the NPL, the yeah. Asian Robin of the NPL, just scores plenty of goals like that. Does um, Sean Ellis, the fire ahead Scotsman, it was a cracker. And then they got a couple of penalties, a couple of decisions which um, could be a little bit controversial. I've spoken to quite a few people who've tried to freeze frame. A couple of them, but it's very hard to do. The referee in much better position than us. The referee is never wrong, apparently. That's it. Well, um, Heidelberg got those penalties and Adrian Zara made the most of them. So they got to that 3-0 lead and then Filipovic tried to get a bit of a late comeback with a couple of goals off the bench, but there wasn't enough for Danny City. And it was a crack of that second one over his shoulder. It was a very nice goal and uh, they threw everything at them, including throwing the keeper forward for the the last corner, etc. But it wasn't to be. So Heidelberg continue their great run um, and have now jumped into clear second spot and only a couple of points behind Avondale as the race hots up for top spot. So well done, Heidelberg, and well done to you for tipping that one. You said they would win by a goal. And you were, you were at uh, Green Gully on Saturday, weren't I you? was. I was for the um, Green Gully Melbourne Knights game. Um, a very well hard-fought game, which I, we were sort of expecting. Um, I thought Gully with home ground advantage might sneak in but Knights were well up for the fight um, and I think one all um, is about just about right I think everyone was pretty comfortable that both sides might have had a couple of chances both keepers um, pulled off some good saves um, but I, I, I was I was happy that one all was about fair after the 90 minutes and it keeps Melbourne Knights in the conversation for the top six as we said they've still got their I believe their appeal is still going for trying to get their points back, That's which will yeah. make sure that they'll be in the top six calculation. So, but at the moment, they're still in touching distance with, with the, the top six. Yeah, and playing on uh, all fronts at the moment. Obviously, with the league, still a chance. FFA Cup uh, next Wednesday evening and a Doherty Cup final uh, the following weekend. So uh, there's a lot happening at the Knights. Um, but uh, they certainly were worth a point at Gully um, on Saturday. And you were at the... Uh, Amazing game, Port Melbourne and Altona Magic. I was at one of the two Super Saturday night games in NPL Victoria. Port Melbourne Sharks, well, with the kit that they're wearing, they did play like Barcelona the first half. They, um, they're they a very quick passing side when they play their best football to the Sharks. Um, very, you know, Kamal Ibrahim, Finn Beekhurst up top, Sam Ford's very powerful um, and runs into the channels. And then you look at the midfield of that they had with um, Clark and Conor Goya. It's, it's a very attacking, sort of quick passing side. Altona, uh, a bit more of a physical side. So the first half, it was really that quick passing football. 
and every time Altona tried to press, the passing was too good for the Sharks to get through. And they scored some wonderful goals, got themselves to 4-0 at half time. And um, you think game over, but it wasn't to be. It was Altona who got a couple of goals within one minute, and that's sort of around the 60th minute, and that sort of changed the game with uh, Dane Milovanovic and uh, Daniel Kuczynski getting that goal in those, those two minutes. And then after that, uh, the pressure was on. Um, Port were making mistakes they didn't make in the first half. Their passing got really sloppy. Right. Pressure was mounting. And Altona were able to go forward. They got themselves a penalty. Um, that was a contentious penalty. Yeah, as Alan Kearney was not happy about that with the referee, and same as um, Adam Pittick on the sideline, I could hear what he was yelling out too. I so, can imagine. So it was very disappointing um, for them. They concede that penalty, and then they've got to hold on for the last five or six minutes. And in the end, um, Hassan Jalal popped up at the back post with McShane's sort of ball across the six-yard box and able to score. And they did have another chance late, Altona, to win it. Oh, wow. but, but in the end, it ended up being 4-4. And unfortunately, the draw doesn't really help either side. No, it probably helps this, the sides around them, really, that are fighting for that top six spot. So um, entertaining, but probably frustrating for both those two clubs. Um, I wonder what was said at half time. With 4-0 down, what can you say when you're 4-0 down? Well, uh, I, I did speak to Goran Lozanovsky after the game to ask, you know, what he said at halftime to inspire the boys. And um, I guess the polite way of saying it is he says, I'm going home, boys. That's pretty much what he told him. And um, the boys sort of picked themselves up after and halftime. And did we actually check? Was he on the bench in the second half? Uh, he was on the bench oh, in okay. the second half. He must have stuck around for a little bit. <laughs> Saw a goal and decided, you know, he had the car running. That was that was for sure, Goran. But in the end, he stuck around and, um, you know, it was a great comeback from Altona. Oh, showed, um, sensational. 4 nil down at halftime, getting a 4 all, Probably just got the points in terms of the moral victory. Uh, but again, like we said, for the top six playoffs, frustrating for both of them. Now, Oakley Cannons and Amondale. The form team versus the top team. And this is one that we both tipped yep. correctly. We both, we both thought Oakley could continue their good form, um, but it went down to the wire. It, it's unbelievable what, how Oakley have turned their season around because um, Avondale was the last side they've lost to in the league. They've pretty much done the rounds of every other club, obviously got Heidelberg in a couple of weeks for the yeah, catch-up game. Catch -up game is so they haven't one. lost any other side. They've, they've pretty much done the clean sweep of the league um, since that point in time. And what a perfect start. Harry Wright with an early goal in the game and um, Avondale really on the back foot from the start. Yeah, and they chased the game, but they were good. They were good and, they, and they're a good side and they've got that many good players that um, clearly they're not gonna just throw the towel in um, and they pushed and pushed right to the end. But um, considering Oakley had the lead a couple of times and blew it, they actually continue to go right to the end when you think they're probably trying to hang on to three all and, and, and get that point in the end. Uh, they still were brave enough to attack and go looking for that fourth goal. And a header, apparently, which was, was a surprise according to the commentators at the game. But Well, I wouldn't have expected Joe Guest to pop up with a header in the last minute to win the game. Um, you know, cutting in on his left or um, scoring a wonderful goal with his left is what you sort of thought that Joe Guest would do. But, um, yeah, popping up in the, six yard, the edge of the six-yard box with a bit of a diving header to beat the goalkeeper... Um, that's something that no one really expected. So Avondale will be very disappointed to drop points like that. But um, some excellent goals in that game too. Um, great build-up play. You know, Bowl and Zini scoring some great goals. Yusuf Ahmed Yusuf probably Ahmed, the goal. Goal of the week. Easily the, goal of the week. <laughs> outstanding the way he took him on and then just unleashed a shot that um, I've had people behind the goal say it really swerved in, in the air and it, it gave the goalkeeper absolutely no chance of no, stopping keepers that. keepers don't have any chance when it goes up where the spiders live. That was a beautiful goal. Great to watch um, and added to the drama of a great game. And the other one where we both got it wrong, the Sunday game, yeah. South Melbourne and Thunder. The, the, the South Melbourne who had only scored three goals in their previous five games and couldn't score against the free scoring Thunder, um, South finally turned it round. Well, the defensive issues that Danny Nong Thunder have had throughout the season reared its ugly head again. Uh, Billy Constantinides with a scrappy finish, but just crossed the line uh, early in the game. But th still then, even when Thunder had their moments in the game, the passing in the attacking third was quite poor. Didn't really give themselves a chance to really test uh, the South Melbourne goalkeeper. And then as the game went on, they scored a couple of goals in quick succession, South Melbourne in the second half, where uh, it was just too easy. I must be a free header at a corner. Uh, which uh, Stratomichos was able to head home was yeah, it was unchallenged. Yeah, unchallenged. And Matt, it, it was a an absolute gift for the the makeshift centre half to score his third goal of the season as well. 
But then on the break, the midfield didn't work hard enough to, to catch up with the South Melbourne players and they were lining up at the edge of the box where Marcus Schoen in the end was able to score and 3-0 and happy days for South. That keeps him in the conversation for the top six again. But well, with the Thunder, it's very disappointing for them. And um, you know if they can't sort of defend much better than what they have in recent times, they're going to really, really struggle to stay up. Yeah, no, it was disappointing for them, but not, not the best result, um, especially now that they're scrapping and Pascoe Vale and Kingston uh, getting points around them and fighting very hard. So uh, I'm sure they'll uh, live to regret that weekend. But uh, next week is another chance for them to redeem themselves. But a great weekend for South, who made us look silly with our preview from last week. Well done, South Melbourne. Well done. Congratulations, South Melbourne. And it was good. And another thing, too, is they threw a kid in as well, which I was talking about last week. Gerandaris come in at play right, right back. back. Yeah, he was and, very um, good. And it's, it's good. And congratulations to South Melbourne too on winning the under 20s as well. They celebrated that on Sunday as yeah, well. They've won that comfortably. I think they've only had the one defeat or the one draw along the way. So good on them and they're blooding the youth. Um, that's great. So we just uh, head to the ladder um, after round uh, 23. Um, and if you want to go through that, Chris. Yeah, so it is still Avondale on top, 23 played, 47 points for them. Heidelberg closed the gap. Still got the catch-up game against Oakley in a couple of weeks. How They're crucial on 45 is that points. catch-up game now? Well, for, ca- for both Heidelberg and Oakley, but also for Avondale. <laughs> yeah, for, for Oakley, it could pretty much seal their spot in the top six. And Certainly. For, and, um, for Heidelberg, they can pretty much pinch top spot off Avondale late in the season where Avondale has held on to it for the rest of the year. Correct. Bentley Greens, even with their draw, are still in third point, uh, third position on 42 points. Green Gully on 38, Hume City on 38, and Oakley round out the top six on 35. A little gap to the Melbourne Knights in seventh on 31. South Melbourne, the two rivals on 31 as well. Port Melbourne Sharks on 30, Altona Magic on 29. Danny Nong City, well, they're going to be safe on 26, and then it's the real battle out of... Pasco Vale, Dandenong Thunder and Kingston City to get to that promotion relegation spot with three games to go. Pasco Vale on 18, Dandenong Thunder on 18, Kingston City on 17. And that is uh, Pasco Vale and Dandenong Thunder will be playing this week to try to... That really is a relegation six-pointer. A huge game, Um, which leads us into Pasco Vale, um, who it's a very important part of the season now. Um, And... You went out there uh, this week and caught up with uh, a few of the boys, including Dean Hennessy. Well, with, with Dino, outside of the transfer window, obviously Vitaly Ferrante has left Pasco Vale, Michael Ferrante, Davey Van Chip, Luca Santilli as well. So they've lost some real senior players. Which a they lot could, of experience. Which they couldn't really replace because they left outside the window. So they've had to rely on these under-18s and under-20 players, which they've got a strong system, Pasco Vale. But um, nobody sort of expected a a teenager to bob up and score that late equaliser. Nick Georgiopoulos has been outstanding. And Aysen Ishak, too, playing left back for Pasco Vale. So I went down to Pasco Vale on Monday night and had a chat to the boys and see how they've enjoyed senior football and what Pasco Vale have to do to stay up in the league this year. No, no, I can't stop the world. No, no, no. But I promise that I'll be here for Pasco Vale down near the bottom, a goal difference of minus 17 but have been reasonably competitive in patches. It is a chance for a goal, and Melbourne Knights score a goal, and they'll get excited now. This is a massive flash in NPL Victoria. Chance here for South Melbourne. Marfiotti, and finally a goal! And South Melbourne lead 1-0. They're in a relegation battle of their lives at the moment, Pasco Vale. Skitanos inside. Can he get the shot away? Catanos, he does! He squeezes it in the bottom corner. Georgiopoulos now. He plays in. Salarico with a shot, and it's in! Pasco Vale Technical Director Dean Hennessy. Just a, a bit of a chat of how the season sort of been so far and the little run in towards the end of the year where Pasco Vale are doing their best to avoid automatic relegation. Yep. 
Uh, Justino, just firstly, uh, Vitelli Ferrante has been such a, a huge uh, person at Pascoval for many years, getting the yeah. club into the top flight. Um, he's had a long association with the club. Just a, a few thoughts on Vitaly yeah, first. Yeah, look, Vitaly, he was one of the reasons I actually joined the club. Um, and, you know, I wanted to work with him. Uh, and to be fair to him, he's the only senior coach I've ever seen that would ever do all the trials for every age group. And we used to do them together. So it was always good to have him there. Another set of eyes, obviously someone experienced. Uh, but he was at the club for 19 years as a player and as a coach. And... Um, you know, it, it really was sad when he when he left um, and disappointing after s such a good season the year before. Obviously, you know, for me, great great person to work with, and uh, you know, and down to him, he's, he's put this club on the map. You know, for, for many many years. Just with at the situation at the moment, you're helping out with the senior team, and we've seen. Obviously, Nick George Opolis come into the side halfway through the year, but we've seen a couple of other youngsters break into the first team and um, really have an impact, especially against Hume City at home on Friday night. Yeah, look, um, to, to be fair, again, Vitaly had a big impact on why Nicky G got in there. He, he, he blossomed in a couple of early games in the season and basically he bypassed from the 18s to the really bypassed the 20s. He just went straight into the first team squad, was on the bench, coming on, coming off but started to play some regular football and, and you know it's down really to V having trust in him to, to come in. He also with Jesse Barber, he also gave him a debut in the FFA Cup. Um, so that's what got Jess on, on the on the board, you know, with the first team you know, at least at one experience, but was training with the group for a while as well. And it's like with the youngsters as we all know, they can be inconsistent, so sometimes they drop back to the twenties then to come and have another go in the first team. And then Ben's most probably one of the more new additions. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a right back. Uh, he was on the bench on the weekend, didn't come on. Um, nearly came on because there was a couple of little things we were going to change, but it didn't happen. Um, but look, I think just not just those three, there's other young players from our under-20s and our 18s that we're really keen to keep promoting as the season goes on with whatever games we've got left. And, you know, and I think that's going to be the way forward for this club moving forward. But as I say, you've got to give credit to Vitaly. He, he had trust in those boys and gave them the opportunity to, to give, give them a platform to, to move forward. Now, Aysen, you started the season in the under-20s and made the transition to the senior squad, playing a lot of left-back for Pasco Vale, particularly in the second half of the season, since yeah. making your debut against Hume City. How have you found the transition from under-20s football to senior football? Oh, well, I found it very big because um, in the 20s football, everything was just like, there was all younger boys and like smaller bodies. But then as soon as I moved up to the senior squad, there was all like, everything was quick, ball movement, bigger bodies up against bigger players. So like, it was much harder than the 20s football. And how have you found the transition with a few other young players from the 18s and 20s making their way into the senior side as well? Well, it's been much better, like helpful for me because as like, being the only youngest one there, you know, it's a bit hard, it's a bit hard to like, make friends with the older boys. So like having them there is just like, helpful, like helping me out, you know, so yeah. And how have you found the senior players helping you out making that transition? Oh, they're all good boys, like as soon as I came in, they're all welcoming, like helping me out, you know, telling me what's right, what's wrong, just looking after me, like as all of them would do. Now, Jesse, you've broken into the Pascaval lineup this year, you've played a couple of cup games off the bench, you made your league debut off the bench and you come on and score the late equaliser in the game with a brilliant header at the near post. Um, sort of take us through that goal and, and how you're feeling about uh, the situation. Um, no, I was, I was confident with the corners because we'd, uh, we'd been practicing set pieces on the, on the Thursday the night before. Um, basically just replicated that uh, in the game and, and, it, and it worked. I, I couldn't believe it, still can't believe it, but um, no, I'm happy it worked. And, um, yeah. So how have you found the transition to, <coughs> as you've played in the league a couple of times, the transition from under-20s football to senior football? Oh, it's a different, it's a different level. But um, no, there's a group, there's a good group of boys out there that, that helped me get through that. So um, yeah. And Nick Georgeopoulos, you've now broken into the Pascaval senior lineup. Um, you've been one of the rising stars of the league this year. Um, you really broke into the team in pre-season, and Vitaly Ferrante at the time was quite happy with the way you've been playing. Uh, it took you to about halfway through the year to break into the league. Um, with a, an appearance against Heidelberg and then a best on ground performance against Avondale. So, and you've scored some cracking goals this year. How have you really found the transition from uh, junior football to senior football? Yeah, so from junior football to senior football, it's a big uh, jump. 
but having Vitali, one's Vitali and now Chicky, um, as well as all the other boys in the senior team to help me come along and show me the real work ethic for what's needed. It's um, been quite an easy uh, jump, as, but of course there was still, took me a couple of weeks to get used to it, but after a while we were able to get used to it and it was quite easy. So you've scored a couple of real awesome goals this year. You've got three for the league so far. Which one's your favourite? Uh, probably my first against uh, Kingston on the left foot. Uh, might not be able to do it again, but probably definitely my first one against Kingston. No worries, Nick. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And joined by Adrian Tellerico, a long-time player here at Pascaval, one of the real senior figures in the squad. How have you found the transition with a few of the young players coming through into the lineup? It's been fantastic having the young boys come in and um, basically take over where other players have left off. So we've got um, Aysen starting, great player, young lad. Nick G's been in there as well. And not only are they just coming into the team, they're actually playing their role and playing their role well. You saw on the weekend that we scored two goals and both of them come from young boys and we needed it and they're there when we need them. So it's been a, a difficult year for Pasco Vale finals last year. A sort of, it's a real even league this year where it doesn't take much to drop off in NPL Victoria this season. Uh, what's some of the things you have to work on uh, for the rest of the year to try to make sure you're in that promotion relegation playoff and give yourself the opportunity <coughs> to stay in the league? Well, I think at the start of the year, we weren't far off at all. Um, there was a fair few games we were just missing out, just missing out, and they kind of piled up on each other. Um, now we've got a change of coach. Vitaly was great while well, he's been here, good mate of mine. Um, we've now got Chicky in, and Chicky wants us to play football, wants us to keep the ball, and you can see that um, from the results and from the way we've been playing, it's been great. So if we can keep that going forward, hopefully pick up some points at the end of the year, keep ourselves in the league and pick up from there. I think the one thing I'm happy is the boys have been playing well recently. So if you're playing well and you're confident, for me, you've got a better chance of winning the game if you're not being in, you're inconsistent and struggling at times. I don't think we have. I think we've been up to our neck in all the games we've played. But sometimes being unfortunate, the loss to Gully and the Knights. But it's football. But we, you know, it was a close game. That's all right. Th thank you so much for your time, Dean, and no best of luck for the rest of the season. No, thanks, Chris. And it was a pleasure to go speak to Pasco Vale. You know, if we look at the stories for the league, Pasco Vale, in that relegation fight, we've got sides fighting for the top six and obviously the title. So it's good to hear from the bottom of the ladder sometimes as well. And uh, best of luck to Pasco Vale. But it's going to be difficult between them, Kingston and Danny Nong Thunder, to who gets to that promotion relegation. Well, they've got a fight on their hands and they know it. Um, I'm sure you would enjoy talking football with uh, Dean Hennessy. Everyone enjoys it. Uh, Talking to Dean about football, that can go on forever because uh, it just never stops. Um, he's just a lovable character. I think I've got about 10 minutes of footage talking to Dino, which I had to edit out for the show. But um, he's an absolute star, Dino, and always very grateful for his time. But um, it gives us the opportunity now to preview the next round of NPL Victoria. So Dandenong and Bentley on Friday night. Uh, Dandenong City. A bit of a, a southeastern derby. Danny Nong City know that they're safe in the league now. Bentley Greens, well, they're out of calculations to win the Premiership. So for them, it's cementing their final spots now, trying to find a bit of form. They yeah, reverse the form. Their form line isn't great at the moment, is it? So it's a matter of just getting back on and winning a game. Um, and they were nearly there last Friday night, but um, a little bit of concentration perhaps at the end. But certainly a big game for them. And with... Uh, Hume and Gully, mathematically a chance to catch them now with a few games left. Um, they really need to get a win on the board. Um, what's your tip for this one, young fella? Well, Danny Nong Thunder, uh, Danny Nong City, sorry, for the first half and have defended pretty for poorly, but they've been excellent since Ante Moric has come in. My tip for this game is Danny Nong City 2-1. 2-1. All right, um, I'm going to go with Bentley to reverse the form um, and finally win one. Um, and... God help us when we look back at that next week. But uh, good luck to both of those. Now, the inform uh, Oakley Cannons versus South Melbourne. Chris Taylor visiting or hosting his old club. Um, There's quite a few old players in that squad too. There is a few that uh, Oakley have got. But uh, 
South now, finally, on the back of a win and some attacking form. Um, will they go and open up and play attacking football there <laughs> um, to a free-scoring Oakley? What do you look? What do you think will happen here? Oh, I think, well, you look at the start of the season, this was the real big games with the established squad, the Chris Taylor, plenty of old South Melbourne uh, flavour in that squad. Oakley Cannons, just the way they're playing at the moment, I can't see them dropping points at home like this late in the season. Uh, on, on a big high after that win against Avondale. South Melbourne will be a bit more confident after having that 3-0 victory, but I think Oakley Cannons this week will, will be able to win at home and probably shut out South Melbourne's late charge to the finals. I agree with you there. I'm sticking with the form team Oakley. Um, and like I said, with their catch-up game coming up, they've got a lot to play for um, and they're in a, a really exciting form. So Kingston and Melbourne Knights nice. brought forward from Monday the normal Kingston home game nights. They brought that forward to Friday to help accommodate uh, Melbourne Knights and their uh, FFA Cup and Doherty Cup fixtures. Um, Kingston, everything to play for. Can they produce some magic here? I think they will. I think uh, Melbourne Knights, although they won't admit it, we've seen <laughs> clubs look towards their cup fixtures in the FFA up. Cup and, and freshen a little bit. Or even if they do play a, a quite a senior squad, um, we saw with Hume dropping points, we saw with Moreland Zebras dropping points to, I think it was Ballarat yes, the, week the week before. Four, so, yeah. And Kingston actually have a really good record against Melbourne Knights in the NPL. So uh, Nick Tolios aside, will get a bit of confidence with their late run against Bentley last week, and I reckon they're going to edge out Melbourne Knights. All right, I'll uh, half agree with you, and I'll, and I'll go with the draw, um, but a high-scoring draw. So which brings us to the uh, fourth versus fifth, both teams on equal points. Both had an opportunity to jump each other this weekend, but they had draws. Um, Hume and Green Gully at Hume on uh, Saturday twilight, if you want to call it, with uh, Hume playing early with the seniors. Um, what's your take on this game? Well, Green Gully uh, knocked off Hume City early in the season at Green Gully Reserve. It really is a game that'll pretty much decide who gets the home final as as being with, you know, sort of Bentley third, looking who can get fourth and get that home uh, final in a couple of weeks when the final start. But I think Hume City coming back midweek fixture up in Canberra, I think Green Gully will get the points again. Okay, well, I'll stick with Gully. Um, while they uh, didn't lose on the weekend, uh, they, were, they were pretty good against the pretty solid Knights. So I'm hoping they can go there and uh, snatch the points. But... Uh, I'm expecting a lot of fireworks, and this should be a very, very interesting game. It's a mini final in, in effect, um, so I'm quite looking forward to that one. Port Melbourne and Heidelberg. Well, Port Melbourne, which, which Port Melbourne's going to turn up this week, the first half or the second <laughs> half? And you can say the same about Heidelberg too, 3-0 up in the first half. Very um, true, very true. two goals, so... But their recent form has been very consistent, Heidelberg. So, overall, so that, that, that what are they, four on the trot now that they've won or something like that? So, um, they're certainly going in all guns blazing, looking at that top spot. Avondale are doing them a favour every week and, and giving them a sniff. Um, and the game in hand, two points behind. Um, so much to play for. I remember you and I were talking about Heidelberg uh, five, six weeks ago with having this string of away games. That could it affect the outcome of their season? Um, I think we were both confident that it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, and at, at this stage, it's proving to be the case. So um, while Port when they turn it on, can turn it on. Um, I'd be surprised if Heidelberg don't win this one. I think Heidelberg will turn it into a real physical battle. That small pitch at uh, JL Murphy does help. I'm the same with you, I think Heidelberg get the win. Yeah, let's stick with that one. Uh, Altona Magic um, and Avondale. Avondale, who need to win a game. Um, Magic's form's not great. I had a great second half, obviously, as we've mentioned. Can they at home I think cause I an upset? I don't think so. I think Avondale will be back uh, on the winners list this week. A lot of soul searching after their game against Oakley. Chris Oldfield spoke very well on uh, Avengers TV on their social media channel channels. If somebody wants to have a look at that, um, very raw and emotional from him, saying it's more of a mental thing for the the guys, which we sort of believe to be the case as well. I think Avondale will get the the points against Altona. All right. Well, uh, as much as I'm enjoying Altona Magic's run and the way they go about it. Um, I'll probably have to go with common sense here and uh, stick with Avondale to finally turn around and get, get a win. Uh, so Avondale and this for me, which leaves us with the what I think will probably be the match of the round. 
um, on Sunday, Dandenong and Pasco. Oh, late Saturday night again. Yeah, we got Saturday uh, night at Dakin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Dandenong Thunder versus Pasco Vale. Clearly, so much to play for, both in the in the bottom three. Um, what's your thoughts on this one? I th- I think I think Thunder. I think Barnes will get a couple of goals this week. He, he's gone. And, a couple of games now without hitting the back of the net. I think he'll be able to... It's a long to. time for him. Yeah, so I think he'll be back to his scoring form. I think Thunder will reassess how they move the ball forward against South Melbourne. I think Pascoval are good enough for a goal or two as well. I'm tipping a 2-2 draw, and these two will still be fighting it out to try to survive. And I reckon, because I've tipped Kingston, I think it advantage Kingston at the end of the round. Oh, I can see that. Well, I'm looking for goals, because I think... Both sides are going to throw caution to the wind and they probably need to at this uh, time of the season. So I'm hoping for another four all. Oh, there we go. You know, in what order? I don't know. And any late drama will be good, which will help us sequence next next week's show. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go for a high scoring draw at this one. So I'm quite looking forward to uh, uh, the game this weekend. Well, hopefully we get to see plenty of goals like we saw in round 23 as we head to round 24. So as you said, it's a Going through that, there's plenty of games that have such a big contest, uh, co- context to the end of the season. So it um, should be an excellent round of NPL football. Looking forward to it, Chris. And also, Cots, so you've got to say a big thank you to the Melbourne Knights who did give us the opportunity to film at Summer Street this week. But we just thought with the fact that they've got FFA Cup pre- preparation, change of the fixture to play Kingston Friday night, we just thought it might be in a bit too... Hard to get an interview out of those guys. It's a busy time. Busy time for the Knights. Well, they would still give us the opportunity, but we just thought it'd be best just to leave them alone and let them focus on their games. Yep. But we do thank you to Parve for giving us that opportunity. And we look to go to the Knights and maybe in future weeks. We'll be there soon and we'll get an interview done there for sure. And a bit of filming. And we look forward to it. Always a pleasure to go to Summer Street. Um, Just... Also Pasco Vale as well too for giving me the opportunity to interview a few players and... And obviously Dean Hennessy, so a big thank you to the Pascoval Football Club. And top man Dino. Speaking of top men, Johnny Gabrielson um, and Bentley uh, parted ways uh, two Fridays ago um, after the Heidelberg game. Um, Johnny Gabrielson and Johnny Anastasiadis together um, were oversaw a most successful period at Bentley Greens um, over the last eight years. Uh, Trophies galore, success on and off the field. Um, he played a huge part in that. He's the no fuss, no frills, don't say anything uh, type of character, but his football knowledge is exceptional. Um, and so well done to him, on uh, to both Johns, but specifically to Johnny Gabrielson. Um, and hopefully um, a club will snatch him up because that sort of football knowledge um, and experience will go wasted. So we look forward to seeing him back involved um, at some level very soon. Um, also, former Sunshine City player back from the 70s for the oldies. Uh, Terry Walker is uh, going through a bit of a health battle at the moment. So we uh, pass on our best wishes to him and his family. Um, And that has been another episode of the NPL Victoria Show. It's been a pleasure uh, again to bring you all the highlights, the reviews and the previews. And we look forward again to another episode next week. Chris, it's been a pleasure. It's been great working with you again. It's always a pleasure to be talking football with you, Kotsi. And that's what we try to do with this show try to bring everything together in this little package for everything that goes on in the week so make sure you like make sure you subscribe and make sure you share our show to try to get it the best traction we can possibly get so everybody can enjoy a bit more of tidying NPL Victoria football well said young fella we look forward to seeing you next week